close your eyes and watch your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths and notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Allow your attention to settle right there. And then watch the breath to see whether it's comfortable or not. If it's not comfortable, you can change it. Make it longer or shorter, more shallow or deeper, heavier, lighter. Try to see what the body needs and what the mind needs right now. Because the breath is a form of nourishment. Without the breath, of course, we would die. But it's a nourishment, and it's kind of like a kind of food that we have, but we usually don't know how to prepare. We just eat it raw. But it turns out if you fix it well, then it can do more good for you. In other words, if you find the breath is just right for the body's needs, the body gets more nourished. The mind finds it easier to stay here in the present moment and not go wandering off looking for pleasures outside. You can develop a sense of well-being right here. Because as long as you're hungry for things outside, you're just going to gobble down anything you come across. And when that's not good, then you reach further and further and further. You just try to find other things out there that will satisfy you, and they don't. Somehow we think that the further we go away, the more satisfying things are going to be. But it turns out the real satisfaction comes from within, a mind that's well trained. And the mind has a sense of enough. And does just it's not just from telling it to say enough. You look after its good qualities, and its good qualities become a form of strength that can nourish you regardless of what things outside are like. Again, it's like being a good cook. A good cook can take almost anything and make it into good food. So if you have those skills and whatever comes your way, good things or bad things, the, the ways of the world, wealth comes, wealth goes. Status comes, status goes. Praise comes, then there's criticism, there's pleasure, and then there's pain. These things go back and forth, and this is what the world has to serve up to us all the time. And you can't say, well, just take the good side and let everybody else have the bad side, or pretend the bad side's not there. We all get good and bad. So we have to learn to live in this world in a way that we don't suffer from or the good or the bad, because sometimes we suffer from the good. You gain status and you're afraid people will take it away. You gain wealth and you're afraid people will take it away. When you have status and wealth, you suddenly find yourself surrounded by people you don't know and you don't know if you can trust them. So even the good things of the world are not good all the way through. The same with praise. You don't know why people are praising you. Do they really know what they're talking about and what's their motive? So if you try to base your happiness on things like that, it's pretty wobbly. So you want to base your happiness on the skills you can develop inside, the skills of the mind, concentration, alertness, mindfulness. These things keep reminding you and keep, keep you focused on where the really important things in life are. And so when things go bad outside, even though things go bad in your body, you don't have to suffer from it. You can take those strengths of the mind and use those to keep yourself going, to maintain yourself. So make sure that you work on these skills, their skills as a good cook, so that no matter what the world serves to you, you've got your skills to turn it into good food, food that nourishes the mind. So even when loss of wealth comes or loss of status, you can see they have their good side. You focus on that. The people who are still good to you when these things happen, okay, those are your true friends. This is one way of learning about that. When criticism comes, you can cons consider and say, to what extent is it true? As the Buddha said, if someone points out your faults, it's like pointing out treasure. It gives you an opportunity to correct your faults. So if you learn how to look at these things in the right way, whatever comes your way, you can turn it into good food for the mind. So work on these skills so that you can be your, a good cook, cooking your experience in a way that makes it nourishing for the body, and if it can't be nourishing for the body, at least make sure it's nourishing for the mind. Because that's the nourishment that really counts. <laughs>